the 2008 report looks at the human rights records of countries around the world for 2007. So it actually covers the period of the previous calendar year. And what we saw in the 2007 report were that some of the challenges we've seen in past years continue to be challenges for the democracy push around the world uh, in, in 2007 as well. North Korea, of course, Burma. Uh, we also saw problems continue in Sudan, Zimbabwe, Cuba, um, in a number of countries. And in citing countries and examples, we don't need, mean to be exhaustive. What we try to do is to cite some examples. And that is not to say that there aren't problems elsewhere in the world. There certainly are. We saw problems continue in Russia with the concentration of power in that country, with civil society uh, seeing political space close. Um, we have continued to see challenges with China, uh, particularly uh, in the lead up last year, at least for the Olympics that were held in 2008. Um, and we've seen problems in other countries too. So the Human Rights Report tries to present as accurate a picture as possible of a country's human rights development. It is not meant necessarily to embarrass countries, uh, although some countries may be embarrassed by the revelation of facts and information that comes from the report. But it's meant to be a tool to draw attention to countries that are human rights violators, that are real slackers in the area of de uh, democratic development, that are authoritarian countries in certain cases. It's also meant to highlight countries that have made some progress. And there have been countries that have made progress over the years, and including in 2007. So it tries to present as factual a report as possible. Um, we often get complaints and criticisms from countries and governments around the world. Um, that's part of the give and take that we have in this. Our goal is to try to make this as uh, accurate a report as possible. We find that many NGOs and, and other governments and organizations use the report as a, as a basis for their activities, and that's what we strive for. Well, certainly uh, the problems that continue in North Korea uh, with gross human rights violations, starvation, labor camps, um, executions of prisoners, um, North Korea remains a, a major uh, source of concern for us. In Iran, we've also seen huge problems in, in the case of Iran. Syria is another example. Um, Zimbabwe, while uh, a lot of attention has been focused in 2008 with all the problems there and the elections that started in March of this year, Huge problems uh, were underway in Zimbabwe in 2007, too, with Mr. Mugabe trying to concentrate his uh, control of power in Cuba uh, with the uh, Castro brothers, uh, the problems that, that existed then, too, in Cuba in 2007. Uh, the list goes on and on. Uh, Belarus was another example in 2007. We've seen the release of political prisoners in Belarus in, in uh, the summer of 2008, but political prisoners were a big problem in Belarus in 2007 and were the source of considerable friction between Belarus and the West. So a number of these countries have been real challenges in the area of democracy and human rights promotion. We, we haven't really yet, um, and, and you, I think, identified the kinds of reforms that we've seen in Cuba, which have been uh, largely in the economic and social sector, and frankly, I think, largely superficial. It's a little hard to get worked up about allowing people to buy mobile phones or to buy microwave ovens, um, things that Cubans should have been allowed to do many, many years ago. So I think we haven't really seen a liberalization of the political atmosphere in Cuba. Um, that's something we continue to press for. It's something that is a major focus of our efforts in the Western Hemisphere. And Cuba, I think, still stands out uh, as a country that has not moved in a positive direction in this hemisphere. And it's a country that we focus a lot of uh, attention in. It is not the intent of the Cuban government to have those reforms lead to greater pressure, to lead to political uh, liberalization. Um, that's a hope, though I don't think we can really count on those reforms leading to such a result. We do stress to the Egyptian government the importance of political reform, of liberaliz liberalization, um, and we have made clear that we want to see Egypt move in a uh, more democratic path. Um, we have resisted conditioning our assistance to Egypt based on certain uh, measurements or gauges. 
Um, we feel it's important to continue to provide support and assistance to the, to the Egyptian people. Uh, we want to continue to do that. Egypt is a very important partner of the United States. Um, but at the same time, we are honest in our discussions with Egyptian officials. Um, President and, and Secretary Rice have both talked about the importance of promoting reform and liberalization and freedom and justice in the Middle East, no longer making an exception for the Middle East from the freedom agenda. And Egypt is no exception to the Middle East exception. So I think it is very important that we continue to press. We press for the release of, of political prisoners in Egypt. Um, and we want to see Egypt really thrive as, as a country moving in a more democratic direction, um, as a country that plays a critical role uh, in the Middle East and a country that can become a real model for others. That's something we want to see. We have a lot of assistance, as you rightly mentioned, uh, focused on Egypt, considerable assistance in the area of, of providing f support for democratization and, and human rights, um, and we're going to continue those programs. I, I think what we try to do is to maintain a steady engagement with the Egyptian government um, and try to avoid some of the ebbs and flows. Some are, are more public than others uh, in terms of our engagement, but I think you have, will have seen um, uh, by the time this administration uh, wraps up a, a steady effort to push on the democracy and human rights agenda. And I think that's something that will continue in 2009 with the next administration. Well, I, let's distinguish between the uh, UN Declaration on Human Rights, which will be marking its 60th anniversary this year, as something we are very proud of, having participated from the beginning. And we look forward to having uh, events and other occasions to mark this important uh, milestone uh, for, for that declaration. Separate from that is the Human Rights Council which its predecessor, the Human Rights Commission, we thought was a very ineffective and uh, irresponsible organization, and, and we think the Human Rights Council has not been any better, unfortunately. Um, we've been very disappointed with the Human Rights Council. Uh, we've been very disappointed with the what seems to us to be an obsession with one country, Israel, where there have been a number of resolutions passed in efforts to uh, constantly bash Israel while ignoring problems elsewhere in the world. And so we have decided that our best approach is to uh, disengage from the Human Rights Council, not to completely uh, abandon it, but to lower our profile and to try to uh, focus uh, in other areas such as the third committee of the UN uh, where we have been very engaged and will continue to be engaged in passing resolutions in, on countries and in, in certain issues that we think are very important. Um, there is the uh, renewal or review of the Human Rights Council coming up in the year 2011. Um, we'll take a serious look at how, how it's uh, shaping up then, um, but it is no secret to say that we've been quite disappointed from it. But the UN certainly has uh, important organizations, important for, important opportunities for us to engage. We just don't think the HRC is one of those. Well, you have to look at the membership, first of all, where you have countries who are on the Human Rights Council that are not exactly the uh, most loyal abiders of respecting human rights. Um, but there have been a number of countries where we feel uh, the Human Rights Council should have focused its attention. It has not done so. Uh, whether it's Burma, Zimbabwe, or countries such as that. And so we, we feel that the Human Rights Council has missed a number of opportunities, and that's why we have taken the decision we have. We do have a, a wide and diverse uh, engagement with China, there's no question about it, but human rights is a very important issue in our agenda with the Chinese. Um, I led the U.S. delegation at the end of May of this year uh, for the resumption of the Human Rights Dialogue, something we had suspended in 2002. Secretary Rice, when she was in Beijing in February, in a, a meeting with her counterpart, Foreign Minister Yang, agreed to resume the Human Rights Dialogue. That's something we thought was important, particularly in the lead up to the Olympics, where we hoped that the Chinese would seize an opportunity to put their best foot forward and to demonstrate a uh, commitment to respecting human rights. Um, I think it is fair to say that we were uh, disappointed um, with, with the missed opportunity, that there were issues raised before the Olympics as well as during the Olympics where we saw that human rights were, were not properly respected. So our hope is 
um, that we see now with the athletes and the cameras having left Beijing, that the Chinese will be able to follow through on a number of issues we discussed when I was there at the end of May. I think it's very important to continue to engage with the Chinese on human rights issues. Um, it's important to uh, remind them that just because the, all those cameras have left doesn't give them a green light to do what they want. Um, we want China to move in this direction. A China that moves in a direction respecting human rights will be a more stable, secure partner for the United States. As I said at the outset, we have extensive engagement with the Chinese. We want to raise our engagement and interaction in the area of human rights, and we want to reduce the differences we have on this issue so that our full-scale engagement can be uh, living up to its full potential. Well, China over the years has become more integrated globally um, in a financial way. It's become a, a more significant player in its region as well as on a global scale. We have good cooperation with the Chinese in the six-party talks. Um, so China plays a very important role. And I think as China looks to become more integrated, it hopefully will also abide by what are universal uh, human rights. Um, it's, we're not talking about American human rights. We're not pushing a, a particular American agenda here. What we're trying to do is to uh, impress upon the Chinese the need to abide by what are hu universal human rights. Um, China will uh, evolve and develop in its own unique way, but at the same time, there are certain fundamental freedoms common to all countries that respect human rights, such as freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, um, freedom of religion that are very important. President Bush, certainly when he was in Beijing, uh, stressed a number of these issues, including his visit uh, to, a, to a church in Beijing. Um, and that's, these are all issues that we will uh, continue to engage our, our Chinese colleagues on. In our contacts and interactions with uh, counterparts around the world, we have stressed that the United States is, is not perfect. We have been trying to uh, perfect our democracy for almost 232 years, and we still don't have it right. And I think the uh, instances you cited, Abu Ghraib and others, are a reminder that we are not infallible. Um, and, but what we do try to do is when attention is drawn to these issues, we try to uh, make sure there is accountability, we try to correct our mistakes, and we try to uh, make sure that there are the proper checks and balances so that different branches of the government keep an eye on each other. And that, I think, is, is one of the fundamentals that we stress, the importance of checks and balances, the importance of a free press so that the press, in addition to the other branches of government, keeps an eye on, on the government, whether it's the executive branch, the congressional, or the judicial. Um, and so we, we do recognize that we have made mistakes. We try to learn from our mistakes. Um, and we, we even cite these mistakes in acknowledging that we're not perfect. When, when for example, I was in Beijing at the end of May, um, I admitted right up front that we have had these problems um, in, in the recent past. Um, so that I try to avoid the impression when I travel to various parts of the world to engage in human rights issues or a dialogue on, on democracy issues. I don't want to come across as saying that the United States is perfect, we know what's best for everybody. Um, I want to admit right up front that, that we have our problems, we're trying to work through them, um, and we hope that other countries will learn not only from our mistakes, but also from the good practices we have in place and the solid institutions we have, uh, the very free press that we have, and all of these things. So, so that's very important to stress too.